Hello everyone and welcome to the CNCF on-demand webinar introducing Mizu, the Kubernetes API Traffic Explorer for Kubernetes. I'm Rafael and I'm an Upline co-founder and leading our customer experience teams and I'm honored to be here today and share how our open source project helped developers, DevOps, SREs, testers, uh, and basically anyone who runs their API in a Kubernetes environment troubleshoot their APIs. So here we go. Quick agenda. After today, you will know these three things. One, there is a better and easier way to debug your APIs in Kubernetes. How to deploy and use Mizu on any Kubernetes cluster right away. Utilize Mizu's feature uh, to help you troubleshoot and actually capture issues in real time. I'll start by explaining the pain in a high level and I will do a quick overview of Mizu to get everybody in sync. Uh, don't worry if you've never developed a single code to Kubernetes API, you're still good to go. No, you can try that. Uh, then we'll jump into a hands-on how-to demo. I'll show you how you get from zero to, I won't say hero. Uh, getting all the APIs tracked with Mizu and how you can actually even do an on-demand tracing for a simple scenario. A summer summary and takeaways and a couple of frequently asked questions that got our Mizu users and customers uh, intrigued. So we'll answer them here and give you the next steps. Um, and with that, let's dive into what happened. So first of all, if you are a backend developer, this slide is for you. We feel your pain. Kubernetes developers are troubleshooting in the blind and it's time consuming, not to mention frustrating. The business logic is distributed across many hundreds, maybe thousands of services with high complexity and exponentially more API traffic than we used to before. Developers, have very limited access to that traffic. Um, the best analogy that I can give you, think of debugging your website without no access to dev tools in your browser or any type of logs of your website. Browser or browser, yeah. Fun, huh? No, not fun. How do we get to that? Uh, the actual reason for this API Django, uh, it's because we decided to go on microservices and making sure each microservice is decoupled to gain all the beneficial of technology agnostic, uh, scalability, ease of use, etc. Um, in this picture, you can see we had the monolith on the left end, and we had three parts. We had the external APIs. Those are the GitHub, Twitter, Google, Facebook that used to do the, the single sign-on logins, right? Or for example, the Stripe for payments, right? They stay the same. You just call them, you get a response, great, right? No problem, you can even do that with a curl command. However, your code base, all those um, uh, interfaces that you expose are now internal APIs. They represent a significant portion of the business logic that uh, replaces what used to be a public interface in the monolith. So um, remember you just used to just do an instance of a class and then dot and autocomplete to get access to that. Now you actually need to call an API function. There are exponential more APIs to debug. The behavior just moving from something that runs locally in the same memory to network serving multiple business cases. Sometimes it's not just me calling that code, many other microservices, we gaining the ability of the reuse, we can use that. However, now the APIs are more complicated, harder to debug, covered under new a variety of new protocols. For example, uh, gRPC and REST, you can have both of them even. Uh, called over the network, meaning, hey, TCP, sometimes uh, the server is not responding, you got 500, and encrypted. Um, so with that, how you debug? Huh? So 
let's have a look on what we have today. So today we have um, the APMs, right? So the APMs are there for quite a while. The problem is microservices represent a revolution as opposed to just a simple evolution where it relates to the infrastructure, it requires a new ecosystem to support it. Here is a look into what API people, what the API people have today. Uh, if you have just APM, it's like me telling you, you have access to the CPU percentage uh, 10 years ago. It's not enough. Existing solutions focus on limited information that tells very little of the story. So if we look at like distributed telemetry and tracing, they do give us the ability to understand like the response and the response code and the path. Uh, however, engineers need access to more information in order to travel through the APIs and they usually need it now over several microservices communication, including the API payloads between them and maybe into the message queue, for example, on the or the third party as well. And they need it, of course, now. So what do we do? Let me introduce Miso. What Miso allows you to do is see the Kubernetes traffic. It's a simple but super powerful tool that um, I'll give you an analogy. It's like reinventing Wireshark for Kubernetes. It can run on any cluster, no matter what size, instantly, meaning you don't need to do any code change, no deploy, no SDK, no changing your infrastructure, implementing a sidecar or something like that. You don't need to. Give me your kubectl and wherever that kubectl points, you start debugging. You will see all microservices communication at real time, filter it according to your needs and see all the calls and the responses. It works with all modern protocol services, service meshes as well. Um, it allows you to see the REST and gRPC, the Kafka and the RabbitMQ, the Redis, the Linkerd, the Istio, and the encrypted data, whether it's MTLS or TLS. So how about we'll just take Mizu for a spin. All right, so let's jump into the demo. Um, what I want to show you is how you can download Mizu, deploy it into your Kubernetes cluster, and start debugging the application super fast. So what you see here is we've SOC just a demo application. It's installed on my Kubernetes cluster here. Those are the pods. And uh, here I'm going to actually uh, start using Mizu. So the first thing we want to do is download Mizu. How can you do that? You go to Google, and if you type Kubernetes Traffic Viewer, you will see uh, the GitHub repo, you will probably see the App9 blog about it, and the getmizu.io page, which either one will get you the command that you need. You just scroll here, copy the command that you need, and just paste it into your uh, uh, CMD line. What will happen, it will just download Mizu, it's a file around like 43 megabytes. And let's verify that we actually have the file and it's got the right permissions, that's great. Uh, which version of Mizu are we using right now? Mizu version will test 29.0. Today is March 22, so that's the version that we have today. Okay, good. Now what I wanna do, I wanna actually start playing with Mizu. So what I need to do is just normally do Mizu. Ah, sorry, for that, let's make sure that I have the permissions that I need, right? All that is double check that what uh, Mizu is doing. You can see uh, everything is good to go. And with that, let's activate Mizu. Mizu tap dash and the sock shop, or if you want to do everything is just dash capital A, enter. And Mizu is basically now deploying everything into the Kubernetes cluster. You can see the pods are deployed here. And there is a daemon set per node and this is the API service that you can see here. Let me just do that. Here we go. Now we have Mizu on the one side, my application on the other side. Let's bring up 
the uh, network config and do a small refresh and you can see I have all the traffic data here similar to that but let me show you something else let's do a login that is actually not gonna work so if I do login that you can see I know myself here the 401 that we saw here yeah we can see it here from my computer to front end but however we can actually see what happened from the front end to the user right so I can click on that and just click response and see the request response I can see that oh not found for example if I'll do something different let's say I'll use my username and I'll just add a couple of characters to the password do the login now suddenly we can see same behavior right but now it's unauthorized very interesting right cool okay let's start playing a little bit right done with that let's give it the right password and right now we don't need that anymore um, what I want to do is first and foremost I want to debug a specific case what I want to do is I want to see uh, what happened when I try to buy something that is over $100 going to show you it's added to my card and ooh, let's reduce the quantity to that proceed to checkout I got 100 so I want to kind of figure out where the problem is we can see if we open the dev tools let's just do that again we can see that we got the 406 so we got the 406 from here let's trace it uh, what we can see is first of all it's an HTTP request right so let's go and HTTP added the filter here great now what I want to do is okay let's see who is actually involved with that so let's do that again here we go uh, we looking at this so front end called user sock shop great we have the user now after the user it calls orders interesting and get already 406 so we see mm, reducted we're going to touch that in a second and we can see it's not acceptable and we can actually see the code uh, not the code the exception that that code threw and what was the problem here okay I want to debug that one level further uh, first of all I want to see who plays with whom here so let's look at the service map look at the service map and this is a service map inferred from traffic so we can already see what we have here we have front-end calling carts front-end calling user, front-end calling orders, orders is calling payments. Hmm, interesting. Let's create a Mizu um, tapping regex that will kind of capture that. So what we're going to do, going back to my screen, control C, and as you can see, control C just removes Mizu completely from the cluster, no traceback, no problem. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to have a regular expression that catches like front-end orders and payments and Remember the reduct. I want to see all the data No reduction because I want to debug everything again uh, now this time we're tapping only four pods and Let's give it a second. Here we go. And now let's do the same thing. So let's clear the cart okay and add Holy again, add to cart, and you know, just for the sake of it, let's clear the, let's clear the filter and item in cart, clear the filter, proceed to checkout. Here we go. Stop. Perfect. Now we basically have the trace of the application. So look, we got my browser calling frontend, frontend calling customers, literally showing me the request and the response. Remember we had that reducted. Now we can actually see the address and everything that we need here. Great. After customer, after the, the user, what we got, we are having orders doing a post with all the data to payments. Great. I'll move myself here and we can actually see the entire request and the response remember here we only see the orders uh, what is the response oh no payment is false payment declined why is it 200 then 
huh, maybe I'll call my third party or maybe we'll call the service owner and kind of check with them. Okay, great. Payments, then we see orders, still checking things with the user. And then uh, front-end service get from orders 406, which is making sense. You, you ask for that and orders now responds with not acceptable, giving you giving the front-end gateway the information they need and the message to bring to the customer as well, right? So now front-end answers the user, which is me, hey, that was your request, that is the response. So I personally will not add the exception there, but this is the error that the user got. Did I have to change my code? No, nothing. By the way, on top of that, showing an open API, open API spec for that. And you can just go here, look at the front end and maybe send that to someone else. Here is the post to the cart. You can grab it from here and then do it with the curl command or something like that, whatever you want. And that's how you debug with Mizu with literally less than a couple of minutes. Um, going back, uh, cleaning uh, Mizu, just control C. Um, again, I use the no reduct. Of course, you can have uh, a profile that says, what are you reducting and whatnot. There is a set of policies and I'll touch that in the Q&A. So with that, going back to our presentation. Okay, switching back to the slides. So let's talk about a couple of uh, frequently asked questions that we got from our customers. Um, how do I tap my entire cluster, which might be useful if you have like a dev environment, multiple namespaces, you just want to tap everything, start from there. Um, how can I redact, remove the items from observed traffic? Uh, which again, you know, especially if it's production, but also like in pre-production, maybe you don't want to share the authorization keys if the API keys that the individuals are using, how would you be able to redact that from data? Um, are you running as a sidecar? I'll explain that. Uh, which permissions does Mizu require to run and and what is the overhead? So you would be a bit surprised with the answers. So let's start with um, how do I tap my entire cluster? So, super simple. Mizu tap dash capital A. Just take everything and that's it. Um, you can have dash N and the namespace just as I showed you. That's uh, also a possibility to do. Um, can I reduct or uh, remove uh, items from my observed traffic? So out of the out of the box, uh, Mizu does reduct values such as token, authentication, password. It does that on the header level and the body of the request and response. So it kind of gives you a clear thing. Uh, we literally took uh, a whole document or article in our documentation to kind of define uh, what are the rules and explaining how you can uh, remove or add to that list. So for example, if you have your own special header or key or value, then you can definitely add that as a one time to your client and share it with people or just in a centralized way in the Mizu Pro, just define it one time and then nobody will be able to do that. Um, uh, and with that, if you're using the open source, dash dash no dash reduct will just open everything for you. If you need to debug something and you don't want to reduct at all, you can even make that the default. Um, are you a sidecar? No, next. No, sorry. Uh, um, actually, we started as a sidecar. Uh, the problem is that you are doubling the resources. It was too, super, super hard. Uh, what we converted to is a, a daemon set per node that is actually have a pod that obeys the regular expression or um, uh, the namespace. And one more pod for the web server that kind of shows you all the traffic and everything. So it's very lean, but definitely a mean tool. And with a control C, you just clear everything. Uh, let's go into the permissions. So permissions in Kubernetes are super hard to explain. We again created an article just for that, describing all the permissions. And of course you can do the Mizu check, pre-install and then check after the installation uh, on a high level, okay? As a rule of thumb, if you have kubectl, if you're using kubectl to manage your cluster, 
uh, deploying, uh, removing deployments, changing port forwarding, etc., you are most likely ready to go with all the main features of Mizu. Uh, for MTLS and TLS, uh, we do require some Linux capabilities for the eBPF technology. Uh, some of them are uh, here actually, and it's fine if you're not feeling comfortable with that, you don't have to, and we still show you the unencrypted traffic. Uh, if you're using, for example, uh, Link Linkerd, then there is a seamless integration and you can do that. Same goes for Istio. And the last, uh, what is the overhead of the capturing? So hard to say because it depends on a lot of parameters such as your uh, node uh, specifications, uh, such as the amount of traffic that you're going to do uh, like requests per seconds and even the size of those requests. Uh, from what we've seen, it's none to very, very low amount of resources that are actually being consumed by Mizu. You can also define what Mizu will use. And uh, Mizu runs in lower priority than normal applications, which means uh, by default, we prefer your application to work rather than us seeing the data. Of course, you can switch that automatically. You can just say, I want to run in higher priorities. For example, as a standard debug tool for everything, you prefer to see that. Let's say you have a, a, a loop that goes over and over causing CPU, you want to see what started that maybe uh, uh, from an API, then that would be great. So uh, most, like, again, operation super low. Even the encrypted data and the eBPF uh, overhead is very minimal, and you can try that. Um, I will definitely try that uh, before I'll go into some edge cases of, you know, like uh, APIs that are doing 50 megabit, megabyte per second uh, and are overwhelming monitoring on normal systems. So it's worth it. Next steps, uh, so you get Mizu from getmizu.io or from the GitHub where, where you can just build it yourself. Documentation, getmizu.io slash docs. Our Mizu community where you can just come and share problems, thoughts, questions. It's super fun to, to hear from what people are using Mizu too. As I said, somebody came and just asked us to uh, compile Mizu for Rapsberry Pi because he had Kubernetes of Raspberry Pis. Crazy, amazing. Uh, one more thing, next week we're gonna have another on-demand uh, from the uh, on-demand webinar from the AppName family, uh, done by no other than Tom Akehurst, the founder and maintainer of Wiremock. He's going to explain how we took Wiremock into the Kubernetes microservices world. Here is the link. And thank you very much. Um, I hope this was useful for you guys and would like to see you in the Slack community. Have a good day or rest of the day.